How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be doing, yes again, another unboxing. This unboxing is one I'm very, very excited for. In today's video we are going to be unboxing five aircraft. We should have four in this box and one in this box. This one in particular is quite a rare model and this model is actually from Bedfordshire Diecast I believe it's called. Despite this one being quite a rare model, um, this one was actually only £35 which is even cheaper than some of the newly released models nowadays. In my opinion at least I think £35 should be the standard price for a lot of models. Um, I even remember back in the day when models were about 25 a pop but now now they're you know over 40 getting on to 50 now which is absolutely insane these models aren't new releases and um, they're also not models that i need for dulles these are just some models that i kind of i've kind of wanted for quite a long time and i decided about two weeks ago just to pull the trigger and buy these um, and we'll get to them as we go through them i think i'm going to unbox this one first this is the rare one we've got one in this box and then four in this box so i'm going to take this one off to the side now and we're going to start with this box here Okay, we've got newspaper in the inside of the box, very traditional packing there. And then inside here we have the model. Okay, so the model in this box is the Gemini Jets. This is a very old model as well. But we do indeed have the Gemini Jets 2005 release British Airways 767-300. I'll explain why I got this aircraft right after we've fully unboxed it. It's uh, covered in this uh, bubble wrap here, so I'm going to take this off and then uh, get to the actual model. And here's the box. You can tell it's an old release. Here you go. It's a uh, 2005 release Gemini Jets Las Vegas. And you can tell it's an old one because all of the old boxes don't have the color in the Gemini Jets logo. Logo. It's just the white Gemini Jets logo up there. Then we've got the British Airways logo on here instead of the clip art taking up this portion of the box here. We've got the clip art down here, Boeing 767-300, then the British Airways titles here. On the back of the box, it's pretty much the same as a lot of the newer ones. It's just in a little bit of a different layout. We got the aircraft here kind of in a climb position there with the kind of like the 3D art sky behind it there. Gemini Jets logo there, all this legal information. And then we have the kind of like the uh, pull up tab here all the information on the inside and then we have the model which is protected by some toilet paper which is an interesting choice but actually opening the box now we can take out the model of course we've got the classic Gemma Jets plastic and um, protection here uh, it's a little bit dented on the side here but oh well as long as the model's okay that's all I really care about taking the top off here we've got the toilet paper the plastic and then the actual model and wow this is this is a model I've wanted for a very very long time so this is the British Airways 767 300 as I said these are now retired these retired back in 2018 I was lucky enough in October of 2018 to get on one of the final British Airways flights uh, of the 767 of course I flew from London Heathrow throw to Stockholm in Sweden. British Airways received their first 767 in the year of 1990 and kind of in the OG days of the 767 they would operate these on high demand short haul destinations and low demand long haul destinations. So for example before the days of the 787 this was the aircraft that flew to Baltimore um, and also this used to fly on the second daily flight to Washington Dulles and um, back in the day of course you'd have the first daily flight from London Heathrow to Dulles on the 747 and then the second second uh, flight of the day would be on this 767 right here. I might actually include this in my next Baltimore Thurgood um, update or my up and coming Dallas updates as well just because this aircraft did used to fly to both of those airports. Now near the end of the life of this aircraft, um, this aircraft used to fly around Europe kind of solely, it didn't really do the long haul destinations anymore. 2017, 2018 this aircraft would fly to high demand short haul destinations as I said so places like Edinburgh, uh, Stockholm, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, uh, Rome, Athens, various other places like that, this aircraft used to fly to those destinations. Technically the successor of this aircraft, the aircraft that went to replace this aircraft was the 787-8, however the 787-8 doesn't operate those high demand short haul routes that the 767 used to. So although technically the 787 is the successor of this aircraft, it's not the successor in all aspects. But just flipping this aircraft around now we can take a look at the actual model and take 
take a look at the uh, mold and everything like that. Okay, and take a look at this aircraft in detail now. Here we've got the nose of the aircraft. This is the 767 nose. It's done pretty well. Resembles the 767 pretty well. We've got the cockpit windows there, of course, uh, with the uh, forward landing gear here. And um, you can tell this is an old mold because, of course, we have the non-rolling landing gear. Honestly, despite this model not having rolling landing gear, it's still an amazing mold. Um, this is one of the things I, I would really appreciate Gemma Jets if they actually listen to is that despite this model not having rolling landing gear, I think it's actually in some cases the non-rolling landing gear mold versions are far superior to the actual rolling landing gear versions. In the 767's case, it's actually not that true because of course the new mold of the 767 is absolutely fine. But when we look at aircraft like the 777 and various other aircraft like that I honestly far prefer the non rolling landing gear version over the rolling landing gear version but that's just my opinion uh, moving back here of course we've got the L1 door here the L2 door then of course we've got the uh, British Airways Speedbird uh, check here with the British Airways logo down there underneath the windows and uh, then we've got the uh, blue underbelly right here but moving on to the wings now of course uh, the British Airways 767 was one of the uh, 767s that doesn't have the winglets of course airlines that like to keep the 767 like United like Delta have added winglets onto the edge of the uh, wings there. By the British show, 767 never included winglets, so we got the non-wingleted version, 767-300 here. We got the blue engines there, and as well on the undercarriage here, you can see that we've got the uh, main landing gear. This is the non-rolling landing gear, of course, and then we got the huge Gemini Jets titles. All of the older molds had uh, very big Gemini Jets logos, as you can see, and then we've got the stand hole there as well. And then finally concluding this model, we have the rear of the aircraft, with the rear door here with the registration and then the classic British Airways Chatham Dockyard tail. Overall, this model is absolutely amazing. I'm very glad that I was able to get the older mold of the British Airways 767. I may, if I ever find the money or whatever, um, I might try and get the JC Wings version, which is the more up-to-date 767. That would be the livery that would operate in the 20 teens versus this one. This would be operating from around 1997 all the way to around 2008. But now I think we're gonna move on to our next models. Okay, and now opening the big box from uh, AMS now, we can get out these models it's kind of bulging as well so that kind of shows me those models kind of over the top so I don't want to dig into the box too much that'll damage the boxes okay and we can open this box to reveal okay this is interesting um, I did order four but we only have three in this box so this unboxing is only going to be three of these aircraft I do have a fourth one on the way but that obviously hasn't come in this box for some reason we have various liveries of this type of aircraft Starting off with this one, we have the NG models. British Show is 757 in the Chelsea Rose livery. We then have the NG models British Show 757 in the Blue Pool livery. And then finally, we have the British Show 757 in the uh, Scottish Tartan livery. Now, as many of you will remember, these are all liveries from the Project Utopia um, kind of scheme the British Airways did from 1997 to about 2001. And again, these British Airways 757s, these are retired. These retired in 2010. British Airways operated 61 of these 757s, but they were replaced by the uh, kind of like the A320 family, uh, primarily the A321. But these aircraft were operated alongside the 737s. And in the 1980s and 1990s, the 757 along with the 737 would operate the British Airways short haul routes until around about the uh, late 1990s um, going on to now when they were replaced by the A320, A319 and A321. And I think with that we're going to start uh, with unboxing. I think I'm going to start, I think I'll start with worst to best. I think the Chelsea Rose is my favourite livery out of all of them. The Scottish Tartan is my second favourite. So we're going to start with the Blue Pool 757-200. This is again by NG Models, so you can see the box is very well done. We've got the uh, crown emblem in the back there with the actual clip art of the aircraft. Uh, then some imagery around here, British Airways logo down there, Blue Pool, the name of the livery. Then on the back, it's pretty much the same, just with all this legal information. And then on the sides, we have like the livery of the aircraft, the logo, everything like that over again. So yeah, with that being said, I'm now gonna open the box again. <laughs> the NG Models boxes are very, very tightly packed. Um, and we can reveal the aircraft inside here. So here we have the uh, packaging of the aircraft. We have the plastic top with the polystyrene bottom. Uh, I can take the plastic top of the aircraft now. Uh, and then we can take the plastic sheet off the aircraft and then we can kind of wiggle out the actual model. Uh, let's just get this out like this. And here we have the model. 
Initial impressions are very good. It looks like a very nice model. Before we go into this model in detail, I think we're going to unbox the other aircraft now. So we're just going to put that off to the side for now. And then we're going to get onto the Scottish tartan livery here. Again, so all around the box, we've got this kind of like tartan pattern with the green, the red, and the blue. Uh, British Show's logo, the aircraft, Boeing 757, engine models. Uh, same on the back, just with all the legal information. And again, on the side, it's just got more of the aircraft and everything like that. So let's go ahead and open the uh, box here. I have yet to have a broken 757. I think NG Models has absolutely nailed the 757 mold. Like there's no arguing about it. The 757 specifically from NG, they've just absolutely nailed. And plus the 757 mold is kind of what made NG famous. Um, but putting that off to the side, we're gonna get out the Chelsea Rose, which is my personal favorite one. Um, and then we'll get on to actually reviewing these in detail. And again, this is kind of like the same style of box, except for the Scottish tartan pattern. We've got like a rose in the background there. And here we have all three aircraft. Again, I do have another one on order. Um, I should get that very soon. I'm not sure why that hasn't arrived with these. Maybe they just didn't have it in stock and they're requesting it from somewhere else. I'm not really sure. Uh, but here we have all three. Uh, these are actually my favorite out of the four. So I didn't actually mind these coming first. And we have the Chelsea Rose, the Scottish tartan and the Blue Pool livery. If you remember back to the video I made on the Project Utopia uh, kind of scheme that British Airways did, this was a livery scheme British Airways kind of took on in 1997 when they adopted the uh, Tap Chat and Dockyard livery rather. They had an idea where they would paint every aircraft within their fleet into these special kind of uh, tail liveries which would represent different parts of the world. And these are three of them on the 757. Uh, Gemini Jets did also release one of these liveries a couple years back or a year back or something like that. Um, I'm not exactly sure the name of the one they released, um, but they do have that in stock at AMS, so I am considering maybe getting the Gemini Jets one as well. It would be quite cool to get because I believe that one represented a, a different country uh, versus these actually representing all places inside the UK. Of course, the Chelsea Rose livery represents England uh, with the uh, Rose, the English Rose. I'm pretty sure the English Rose is the kind of like the, um, the flower of the UK. I'm not really sure about that. I know it's definitely England, I'm not sure about the UK though. I know that the rose is used specifically in uh, rugby to represent the English team. And it's kind of one of those things that represents England. I know every country has like a national flower and a national animal, like the US animal is like the bald eagle or something. Then the Japanese animal is the koi fish. I'm not sure what the UK animal is, but I know the UK flower is the rose. Okay, so I've been looking into it a little bit more and I wasn't exactly 100% correct on all of this. So every country has a national flower, a national bird, and a national animal. So for the United States, I was almost correct. The national animal isn't the bald eagle, the animal is the bison, then the bird is the bald eagle, and then the flower is the rose. Then for the UK, it's a little bit more complicated because it's actually split up into all of the nations. So England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland all have their own separate um, national animals and birds and flowers. So for England, the national flower is the rose, then the animal is the lion, uh, depicted in the coat of arms, and then the national bird is the robin. Then in Scotland, the national flower is the thistle, the national animal is the unicorn, and the national bird is the golden eagle. Then in Wales, the national flower is the daffodil, the national animal is the dragon, depicted in the flag of Wales, and then the national bird is the red kite. And then finally in Northern Ireland, the national flower is the shamrock, which is the same as uh, Southern Ireland. Then Northern Ireland doesn't actually have a national animal. And then the bird is the lapwing. And so yeah, if you came here expecting to learn more about aviation and you ended up learning more about national animals, uh, you're welcome. You learn something new every day, I guess. Then in the middle here, we have the Scottish tartan livery. This livery, of course, represents Scotland. Scotland is famous for their kind of like their tartan pattern scheme here. Although this livery does now no longer exist, um, I know Logan Air, which is a Scottish airline that's still around today, um, they do actually use on various aircraft the uh, tartan pattern, which of course looks very similar to this color scheme right here. And then the final aircraft here, we have the Blue Pool 757-200. Now Blue Pool represents the city of Pool, which isn't actually too far away from where I live. The way the Project Utopia kind of like liveries were done, it kind of 
of seems a bit messy. Like there's no organized theme to where each livery was from and there was kind of like a few aircraft painted in one color scheme and then you'd have one aircraft painted in another one and it just kind of felt really mixed and I don't know, it just didn't feel neat. But the liveries are pretty cool, especially the Scottish and the English one. Of course, Poole is actually known for their pottery. Um, Pool Pottery is a place in Poole. Uh, they're very known for their pottery, as I said. Um, I believe back in the day, they used to ship pottery to everywhere in the world. Um, nowadays, not so much. They just have museums about their pottery. <laughs> but it's kind of cool that they did a livery on this. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go through detail on uh, one of these aircraft. I'm not going to go through detail on all of them, just because apart from the tail, these are all the same liveries. So starting off at the front here we've got the uh, 757 nose of course the NG nose done very very well and then you've got this kind of like black disc around the nose. This is something British Airways had I'm not sure why they had this though um, if anybody knows why they had this on the nose feel free to leave it in the comments because I have no idea why that's there but apart from that we have the forward landing gear here we have the L1 and L2 door here we've got the uh, Speedbird check on the front here with the British Airways logo um, titles I should say down here. Moving to the middle of the aircraft here, we've got the uh, engines, the Rolls-Royce engines, of course, with the uh, wings, with the uh, winglet-less wings. And then on the bottom of the aircraft here, we have the main landing gear, which is done very, very well uh, from NG models there. As I've said, I do really, really like the uh, whole Project Utopia idea. I just don't like the way it was done. Um, as I've said in the video about Project Utopia, I will leave that video linked to the end if you haven't seen it. Um, but it's a very cool idea. I really like the liveries. I just don't like the way it was done. I think one of the main mistakes was to paint every aircraft into a special livery. Um, I think a handful of aircraft painted into special liveries would have been so much better. Like for example, either one or two things. So the main, so of course, Project Utopia, the idea of it was to be more pleasing to international customers. So one of the ideas I proposed in my Project Utopia video was that you have five aircraft painted into a livery representing each continent. So Europe, Asia, Africa, Oceania, um, North America and South America. I know that's six, I said five, but oh well. And then what would have been quite cool as well is to see uh, four liveries painted into each kind of nation of the UK. So for example here we've got England sorted with the Chelsea Rose livery and we've got Scotland sorted with the, uh, the Scottish Tartan livery here. It would have been so cool to see a Welsh livery and a Northern Irish uh, livery as well. With the Welsh one it would have been so cool using the uh, dragon from the, uh, the Welsh flag of course. They could have made a really really cool livery out of that. For Northern Ireland I'm not as sure what they could have done a livery on. If any of you are from Northern Ireland or know anything about Northern Ireland you can leave in your comments what you propose as a northern irish livery in this kind of tail design but overall these are really really nice liveries and i'm very very glad i have them in my collection but yeah overall this was a very very nice unboxing again these aircraft i probably won't use in many airport updates and the 767 i might include in a baltimore or dallas update just for the kind of like the og vibes uh, when the 767 used to fly to those airports but overall i'm just kind of excited to have these aircraft as a part of my collection again i should have one other 757 on the way i'll unbox that whenever it gets to me um, and as well i am kind of considering getting the gemini jets one um, as well so i'll i'll have a look if i am going to get that one and if not I won't and if I do I'll include it in an unboxing but apart from that I want to thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one bye